In today's video, Enoch takes us behind the scenes with Britt from American Adventure Lab for a full tour of their shop. We'll check out some of their innovative products, hear the story behind how the company got started, and wrap it all up with a walkthrough of their impressive shop featuring a massive laser. Let's dive in. Hey, I'm Enoch with uh, Welcome to the Outdoors, and we are here at American Adventure Lab in St. George, Utah. Yep. Britt over here is gonna give us a little walkthrough of the facilities and kind of how they do things and how they get the products out to all the customers. Show me some of these awesome products you yep. have. And so, I'll probably ask you a few why questions oh, that'd be great. in there Absolutely. as well. Okay. But uh, yeah, give me a rundown. Cool. Uh, so this is our tailgate table. Uh, we call Versa table. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been selling these for quite a while. Uh, but again, they haven't changed a whole lot. They haven't needed to. Uh, we can do optional battery monitors, contour switch cutouts. Uh, we can do red art displays in the back. So tons of color options. You get it match your Jeep, however you want to do it. Cool. So, Very cool. Uh, this we call a flat slide. Uh, so in this setup, we use this just as additional table space. Okay. Uh, so a lot of times when I cook back here, we've got stuff spread out. You know, you're hanging stuff everywhere, so you just need all the room you can get. So, so uh, something I'm just noticing real quick that this is a very common shape that I'm seeing all yep. around here. Yep. What, what What's the purpose of, uh, of that? So this is two holes of the L-Track pattern. So that lets you use L-Track connectors and threaded studs and ah. everything. So it's a way for us to cut in uh, extra functionality mm -hmm. without adding to the price of the product. That's super so, cool. Yeah, it works out pretty well. There's yeah, there nice. are a lot of accessories made for the L-Track setup. So these are our drawers, uh, four inch drawer, six inch drawer. Mm -hmm. We also have a three inch, uh, but we didn't use that in this stack. Uh, when these are, these handles are pretty new for us. And right, we just so wanted like a way basically for one hand to open and close everything. Mm -hmm. So the drawers are all 50, 52 aluminum. Uh, the outer shell and the face are three millimeters, uh, which is eighth inch for all of you Freedom Fraction guys. <laughs> And they use locking slides that lock in and out. The slides right, have a lifetime warranty on them. Uh, we use the best stuff that, that we can get. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so there's the inside of the six. Uh, lots of positions for all your dividers. So if oh, you okay, so it's in. all different. Yep. And totally the dividers, customizable. Yep, the dividers actually will bolt in, which is nice if you're super anal like me about vibrations and rattles and stuff. I, don't. I might be just a touch. Oh, God, it drives <laughs> me nuts. My wife does not like that about yeah. me. So you just uh, stop in the middle of the trail and be like, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't drive yeah, anymore. Yeah, we gotta stop right now. <laughs> yeah, you drive, I'm crawling in the back. Right. So. <laughs> uh, this we call a cargo shelf. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's adjustable about eight inches up and down. Very cool. Uh, that actual, that trait right there has been sort of the key selling feature as we thought it would be. Does it, is this integrated into the roll cage? It is. Or is it, yep. okay, it is. So in the Wranglers, cool. we, we bolt into the bungs in the roll cage where the soft top would bolt in. Nice. So these are, those bungs are actually already in the chat, uh, roll cage and Perfect. they're actually really strong. So Excellent. there's a video on our product page uh, of me doing jumping jacks on the back of this without the top on and, you know, jumping like that high off the jeep. Nice. So. We've been doing a lot of stuff with the Dometic Go Jugs lately. Mm -hmm. I really like the flexibility of those. So we build a mounting bracket for it. We have an extension kit. Uh, that gives you some longer FDA food grade oh, hose cool. out yep. to here. Uh, and then we build these little brackets uh, for a lot of vehicles actually that, that let you use their magnetic plate. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I'm like this, this little idea right here, something like this and just popped in my head on the outside of almost any vehicle. Absolutely. If you could have it stick and then yep. I could, you know, you're yeah. outside with your jug, you right. just boom, boom. And, and that faucet is really what makes it like possible. I mean, yeah. not having to plug in and having the pump inside of it, it's right. just, it's a great product. Yeah. So Agreed, agreed. We've I sold a lot things. of those and we, you know, having the water here is like the perfect spot for it to wash dishes yep. or wash your hands or cool. anything Very else. Cool. So that's been great. A new product that we'll release maybe next week. Oh, we got secrets over yeah. here. So we've been promoting it for a little while, but okay. we have been able to, unab unable to get some of the lights that we need. So those uh, should be here very soon. Very cool. Uh, but so this, so this I was is especially say, like, how useful. Does, uh, how does it kind of uh, operate in here? So so this is a, a bracket for to hold a ARB dual compressor. Okay. Uh, and why this is important on the 2024 and onward Wranglers, you can get power seats in them. Uh, and so that means you can't put a compressor under the seats. Oh, there's so, no more room for that's it. That's right. Okay. So in the 392s, that's a special problem because you don't have the same access to the space underneath the cubby, underneath the floor. Yep. The little cubby like you had in the others. And 
Uh, they don't fit in the engine bay because there's massive engine that in mass, the way. Yeah, hey, yeah. Don't think you're fitting it in That's there. That's right. <laughs> yep. So, so we've been kind of relegated to find other places to put it. We have a bunch of customers that mount them to the bottom of the cargo shelf, and that mm -hmm. works out really well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but we wanted to just provide another option. Yeah. So yeah. this is the same dimensions as the factory tire carrier. Okay. Uh, so it's still using the factory bumps, so you can kind of, you know, be assured oh, that nice. it's the okay. same dimensions. Yep. Uh, and this also gives you some adjustment both uh, in and out and up and down for gotcha. tire arrangement, stuff like that. Gotcha. Very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. That's that's really unique. I like that. That's also, I mean, I would imagine any any Jeep user is going to see this and be like, oh, I can put it outside yeah. instead of in my cab. Yeah. Like, we know it's going to be a little bit more out exposed to the weather, mm -hmm. but man, that noise is loud. Yeah, and hey. let's, it's like most things. Everything has a trade-off. Mm -hmm. And and we what we like to do is make all the options and tell you why this option is better in this situation versus this one and stuff right. like that. So Absolutely. we don't generally push customers to our products necessarily. What It's more what's going to work best for yeah, them. And yeah, because everything is case. situationally dependent for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like we, I guess we kind of compete with Goose Gear, but uh, they make a great product, mm -hmm. you know, good friends with those guys. And, and there are situations where that product might be better. Yep. And, you know, we, we like to be transparent about that. Absolutely. And uh, that, that transparency's worked out well. We, we want to be a team player like Yeah, you can't else, be perfect so. for everybody. That's right. Absolutely. Yep. 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 So yep. it's better to, to send a, a customer somewhere where they'll be happy than to sell them something they may not be satisfied with and end up with the yeah. consequences yep. at that point. Well, I totally like I said, understand early, that you aspect. Know, we're going to do our thing and we're going to maximize that. Uh, and if that's what works for somebody, great. If not, understand. You yep. know, like, Absolutely. Good. Glad they find what they need. So Very cool. We do some other interior bracket type things. So, so this is kind of a new product for us. Uh, this is what we call our uh, rear door molly pockets. Uh, and so these were designed to basically hold water bottles. Mm -hmm. That's that's about the depth that you see there. Gotcha. Uh, and we've, we've always made the flat ones for a long time. And and people ask for the deeper ones. And I, I kind of thought that I didn't understand the benefit of that. So we never did it. I'm very careful not to spend R&D money if we don't think there's a return. 100%. Uh, and sense. we basically just had enough people that asked for it. Like, okay, you know, maybe there's something there that I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. And we did these, and they've been amazing. I was super wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was you, good that you, yeah. you can accept that you're yeah, wrong. You learned that over time. Yeah, it's very yeah, cool. The, I like, so that's uh, a version of the flat one. Yep. So, and, th so this will be like a map map holder. Yeah, or, well, really or the you intent there is to put bags. To the yeah, bags. Bags or you know pouches and that things like sense. that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always a big fan of uh, you know any any travel rig, no matter what version you're in. Uh, the more storage, the more capacity that you can add within reason, of course, sure. yep. uh, is always a, is a big benefit. And this looks like you've solved a large section of storage uh, issues for, for the Jeeps. And well, we also really let you kill your door nets. Yes, are, those, they're the worst. May, maybe the worst thing of all time. I, so. No, I mean, I've, I've been in a few Jeeps, you know, that one right over there. Uh, I'm yeah. just like, what in the world? Yeah, it's really confusing how that seems to continuously make it on to new, yeah. new models. Yeah, but yeah. Ah, it's, it's anyway. the solution, man. It's the solution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, and we also do an, what we call an overhead molly shelf. Uh, I'll let you look in there so okay, we're not yeah. bumping heads awkwardly. Oh, nice. Okay. And so that so, really gives you the option. Oh, instead of having all that stuff surrounding you yeah. here, you can yeah. really place it. Yeah, that's I'm, super cool. I'm just sort of anal about stuff on the dash. I like. I, like I don't like to look. see things yeah. for some reason. Maybe it's good OCD. Maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Nonetheless, we we keep everything up and out of the sun, so nothing mm -hmm. is getting baked. Um, and it may be hard to see, but we always put the communications radio up here. Okay. Uh, which lets you use the factory speaker, oh, so you're yeah, not introducing yeah. another speaker into the mix and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, it's out of the way. It doesn't get hot. There's plenty of airflow. Uh, this is the ICOM 5100. We do a lot of work with that radio here. Uh, it has a remote display, so we build a, a display mounting bracket for that. That's uh, cool. Then we do a little magnetic mount that's here, uh, and this is just for the microphone. Uh, so yep. uh, oh, that sucker's on there really well. That's way better than my slide in. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, and we do it. Uh, the the magnetic mount is about a half an inch deep. Uh, or we'll call it 13 millimeters for mm -hmm. anybody else that's kind of checking us. And that's so that you wrap your fingers around it. So we put a lot of thought into just how gotcha. you like access stuff like that. So, the, so you yeah, can, the action of, yeah. Right, yeah. So you can find that and, and put it up there without even looking at it. And that's, that's what we wanted to do, see. 
Nice. Keep your eyes on the trail, you know? Nice. That's, it looks clean, man. Like you said, the powder coating looks amazing. Oh uh, yeah, we, they do a good job on that. So. Yeah. Uh, these are a fairly new product for us. These came out at SEMA this year. Nice. Um, so these are 392 specific. Okay. Because if, it may be hard to tell, but the the induction on the hood raises the cowl up a little bit. So this is the normal height of the Ranger uh, hood. Okay. So we have a 392 version of this and then a non-392 gotcha. I'm assuming the offset is? The offset's the same, it's, same? it's just the height. Oh, so gotcha. they, it just goes down for the non, understand. non Mojave JT mm -hmm. and 392 Wranglers get, cool. get this hood. It looks like this is almost a separate piece even. It is a separate so if piece, you yep. didn't want to have the mounts, you could just do your single? Yep. Very cool, yep. very cool. And so those weigh 0.9 pounds a piece. So it's all 2.2 millimeter aluminum. Uh, there's a video of me standing on it. So like, it's I like to stand on things apparently to test them. I mean, you know, when you weigh 200, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. You just, if it holds me, it's there good. Go. Yep, rated. <laughs> yeah, Brit rated. That's right, so. Brit rated. Uh, so these are our new Highline lights. Um, that was one of the first products we actually made back in the day. But okay. that's the new version. This of it. is the new diode. Yep. yep. So that's the smoked version. Very nice. Uh, they use the exact same brackets that we've always made. So okay. anybody that's had our previous lights can change out to the new lights. Uh, super nice. easy. Very cool. So. Good, good upgrade for uh, for all your fans out there yep. that enjoy this product. Definitely check out diode and uh, grab yourself a new upgraded Absolutely. one. And, and under there we do what we call quick release inner fenders. So all four corners, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. you can pop six Zeus buttons out for each corner. And in about 20 seconds, the whole entire shell comes out in one piece. So if you're cleaning or doing maintenance or running wires or anything like that, it's people always say, well, why do I need that? Well, if you take it out one time, yep. you'll, you'll understand. You'll why understand, you need it, so. absolutely. And so this was another new product for us. Um, basically we wanted the, the most inexpensive, most stable way to mount a light bar low on the vehicle. Yep. So that's another one that weighs right at a pound, 1.16 pounds. Nice. Uh, it's three millimeter aluminum. Uh, it works amazingly well. And uh, it's built specifically for the Wrangler steel bumpers. But Very cool. I am a options, huge so. fan of, uh, you know, these kind of aluminum flat style <laughs> uh, units. This is uh, good, simple solutions, lightweight, strong. Yep. Very cool. So a lot of things like that. We have a bunch of other stuff for the Rangers and the Gladiators mm -hmm. that, that we do for that as well. Just another way we're trying to solve a problem and seize an opportunity that we right. that we have. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. But to you have to jump online and see the millions of options <laughs> and accessories that these have yep. these guys have. Yeah, we're up and to I'm joking, they don't have a million, but they do well, have a lot. Well we're up to almost thing. almost four hundred SKUs now. Uh, which is a lot of the reason for the new MRP, ERP yep, system. Yep, it's, just, try to, it's a lot of pieces to try keep to, up try with. To, try know. to streamline that action for yep. sure. So Hopefully. the next thing that's really worthy of showing off is a new product for us that also came out at SEMA. So this is the load bearing enclosure. Mm -hmm. uh, and we call it that because the roof, the bed rack bars are actually optional. Um, oh, okay. They do definitely add weight capacity, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a load bearing enclosure on the inside. Uh, you'll notice there are steel and aluminum supports that run on the inside gotcha. to give you that ability to carry rooftop tent or gear, that type of thing. So. Oh, nice. So so you can really stack some weight on top of that and yep. uh, get out there. That's right. And then you're still, and you have created like an enclosed space to minimize dirt, water, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of situation. And so the, the thought is, so we've, we've made bed racks for a long time. So as you said earlier, we live in St. George, uh, which is, is straight up desert. Everywhere we go is dusty from the time we pull out of the driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind the Fact. dust, but it, it, man, it makes a mess inside your fridge. And, you know, like when you're following people down a trail and that sort of dust vortex is swirling in the back of your Jeep, yep. it's all piling up in places you don't want it to pile Absolutely. up. Absolutely. So I, I wanted to run a rooftop tent, um, but I didn't want the tent sticking above the cab. Mm -hmm. So that eliminates almost every you know, truck cap option on the market. And I also wanted to be able to do a decent size refrigerator in the bed of the truck. Mm -hmm. So the bed sides on the Gladiator are shorter than almost every decent fridge on the market. Really? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know so, that it was a shorter bed. Yeah, so you can't even go out and get a tonneau cover or anything like that because oh, it's, wow. it's shorter than your fridge. Gotcha. So, so what we tried to do was a blend between a truck cap and a tonneau cover. 
Uh, so this height, this is what we call a 12 inch bedrock, it's like 11.73, something like that, mm -hmm. uh, is high enough that you can still have really nice access to all the stuff that's in your bed, you know, including fridge sliders and drawers and everything else that you want to chunk in the back, mm -hmm. but it's still low enough to where you can get into most garages with your rooftop tent on the truck. I see. So the, uh, so the black components are the steel. That's right. So yep. that's kind of the, the hybrid that you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. So, cool. so we're very careful with when we use steel. Um, it's definitely a cheaper material, but you, you pay that back in weight and yeah. corrosion and stuff right. like that. So we only use steel when it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and I felt it was necessary in, in this situation. So, so obviously there's, there's four of those main vertical supports, uh -huh. uh, and that's where we get the strength of the quote unquote load bearing part of the enclosure. Gotcha. Very so cool. everything's 50, 52 aluminum. Mm -hmm. The whole entire product weighs about 150 pounds, nice. uh, which is always, nice. like you said, the weight is, it's so important with us, uh, as we overload yeah. our rigs, yep, absolutely. like anywhere we can save weight is, is a bonus. So this is, that's very 150 pounds, half cab cover like that's great and i'm noticing uh on this as you pulled it down you have a you you paid attention to sealing it up yes yeah, so and making sure that that you're not having intrusion of all those you that's know, right. elements yeah I, I wouldn't claim it to be submersible um but i would say it's significantly more sealed than the truck bed is <laughs> so Fair. so it is not your weakest link off-road yep. uh, especially the the gladiators there's holes all in especially around the tailgate you know there's big gaps around the tailgate mm -hmm. uh, but yeah we we try and i guess i could have shown you this earlier we we seal up every surface that we have access to uh Beautiful. and so that's why these are all countersunk mm -hmm. and so this has a nice place to seal and you can see by just the head of that you know, that bolt pressed in that it's exactly the right distance to make a good seal. Nice. I really like, uh, you know, you've thought out the products. It's really impressive. Like, like you say, you know, taking it out in the world, testing it, making sure that it's going to work and function as it should. And then your end result is a product that you have to do minimal changes in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, a you know, never going to say a perfect product, but yeah. pretty dang close. Yeah. I mean, we, we do evolve some things, but we generally make, a, a different product we're not usually like small iteration changes it's like when we went the you know i told you we had one version of that platform to start with the the next version of that platform was significantly different so much so that it's a different product still gotcha. uses the same pattern and that yep. type of thing all the accessories work with it so we call one mass for modular adaptable storage system okay the other one is mass plus because it just adds a few features but we sell both of them today and we sell about 50 50 of each one nice so nice. as they, with they everything each have their own yep, purpose they each have their own benefits so. very cool very cool yeah we have one really cool product that i wish we had here that we don't so i can tell you about it and you can go see it online it's called the adventure trailer kit and, and the idea is it's a trailer chassis as a platform that you build off of so it's something uh, that ships in boxes, UPS, the okay. longest piece is seven feet. Okay. Uh, you can assemble it in your garage. Uh, it includes Timbrin's axleless suspension. Mm -hmm. um, and that suspension is bolted to a cradle and the cradle can be moved in different positions uh, to adjust your wheelbase based on uh, how you want to okay. use it. Yeah, yeah. So that what we tried to do is take out all of the hard work of building a trailer, but still make it flexible enough for you to go home and build it to your needs. So the, cool. the debut of that trailer, we showed it with a gladiator bed attached to it. So the, the blue bed that you saw on oh, the okay. side yep. is what we took to SEMA. Uh, and so you can buy gladiator bed brackets to mount that bed to the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out to be a really, really great package. We've, cool. we've been very happy with how it works. We made three or four versions of it, but the one that we have now is super solid. Nice. And so we, the one that we showed in Daytona uh, has 40 inch Nitto trail grappling. Oh, wow. Okay. Which was not my uh, recommendation to the customer. It's Daytona, it's, though. Yeah, it's generally <laughs> not something you want to do is put 40 inch tires on your trailer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we have enough length out of it and we have a, the perfect wheelbase to pull that off. And mm -hmm. he said it tows at 90 miles an hour down the freeway. Oh, no problem. Man. I was like, I wish you hadn't told me that. <laughs> but he pulls it with a 392, so there's there's no horsepower. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's so. not lacking anything yep. on that bad boy. And so it, it actually cool. turned out so good that 
we're going to convert our trailer over to 40s as well. Nice. Um, and we have a trip planned. You're creating a new standard, 40s on all trailers? Don't, I don't want to be known for that. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a great idea to me, but uh, we're going to test it and see. We have 37s on it now, and I pulled it all over the country on 37s. Uh, we carry two dirt bikes, mm -hmm. uh, drawers, refrigerator. Yeah, we put the spare tire from the Wrangler onto the trailer. They're, nice. All the tires are matching. Yep. So there's a bunch of benefits to, to towing a trailer that I was never really a big fan of trailers and, mm -hmm. until we started playing with this. And I can see the the big benefits to it now. And we're yeah, going yeah. to develop that out some. So. Yeah, they, they definitely have their place in, yeah. in the industry yep. big time. And there's a Trade lot off. of people. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like it, like we, we've been saying the yep. whole time, you know, you got to do something. You got to make the trade offs. Yep. yep. It works best. So. Very cool. Yeah, I got to peek a little bit at that trailer yesterday when I poked oh, yeah. in. It was yep. it was outside, and uh, definitely looks super cool. Yep. And the the modularity of it is definitely would be the, I think the most exciting part of mm -hmm. it for a lot of people, just to be able to take a a skeleton, and create, you know exactly right. what you want. Yep. And we've we've got a bunch of accessories in the works for. It. We got big water tanks. We got auxiliary fuel tanks. Uh, we've got a big slide out kitchen that's built to go in front of your bed whatever mm, bed yep, you want to put yep, on it so the, the tongue the tongue way yep, area yep and uh yeah just tons of options but again it's a it's a platform and mm -hmm. we'll build off of it just like we do with our mass platform yes. and our jt bed systems yep. and stuff like that absolutely so, absolutely yeah the well, accessories cool. are endless sweet so. sweet and maybe uh, talk about a little bit of like why you got into this and what was like the first solution yeah. like what got you driven and that got you excited about yeah, getting into this? It's it's kind of a funny story. So I've always wanted to have a parts business, always wanted to be a manufacturer. Uh, I spent most of my life in the IT process software world mm -hmm. before this. And uh, so when the when the JL came out, it was sort of a chance to reset the market, Absolutely. right? So like, you're no longer having to battle the poison spiders of the world that have had all this time to refine all mm -hmm. the JK products. So when the JL came out, I snatched up the first one I could get, we ended up driving like six hours to find one in the lot, got it home. The first thing I wanted to do is, is take it out on the weekend. Oh, yeah. And I went to put a cooler in it. And I realized that the hooks were like on either side of the floor. Okay. And yep, I was like, that man, that, that can't happen. What can we do? Yep. So yep. that's when we developed sort of the, the first round of the, the mass platform. Okay. And, uh, and it really hasn't changed a whole lot in yep. six years. You know, we have another version of it out now that yeah. little refinements, yeah, but yeah, all in all, it's still kind yeah, of same. like we still use the same pattern that we nice. use from day one. Awesome, and uh, it's been great. But what we've tried to do is, I'm I'm a Jeep person myself. Uh, the company is not necessarily a Jeep company. We we our sales blew up like crazy for the Jeep world, uh, so we've just sort of developed that product line. But Absolutely. we do have plans. Uh, we just released Forerunner stuff like uh, three days ago. So we are branching out into the other models, nice. but we're really deep in the Wrangler. And, and what we tried to do is, uh, myself owning a Wrangler, uh, every time we took it out, we found something that wasn't perfect. You know, Absolutely. something that we wanted to change or we wanted to mount something here and we didn't have it there. So we ended up making brackets or that type of thing. So mm -hmm. uh, everything that you see that we make comes from us as a company going out to do something and the Jeep not being uh, sufficient at it out of the box. So really every solution or every component we see here is a solution to a problem you found out exactly. in the real world. Yep. To, and so these are different, different steps that are going to make it more comfortable, allow you to stay out there longer yep. and enjoy the nature that much more. Yeah. And, and we've, we've tried to build most things uh, in a way that they can be good products and we get we get to that point by keeping everything pretty modular. Absolutely. So like we know that not everybody wants to occupy their whole storage system mm -hmm. with a stack of drawers. Mm -hmm. So like each of these individual drawers is a, is a drawer module. Oh, uh, very cool. So this, like is, so this is a single system, single, single. That's right. So you can yep. really customize each aspect that you're yeah, looking we, for. At shows, we like to pitch it as adult Legos. There you go. So you can kind of snap together what you want. Nice, nice. And, and most of our products are extremely independent of each other. Mm -hmm. And we're also very cautious to make sure we our products work well with other of the key products in the market. Oh, nice. We, okay. we try not to make anything that anybody else makes. I. I want to always be the nice guy every chance we can get. We, nice. you know, we don't want to step on any toes, and we know other people are doing really well with other products. So Absolutely. We yeah. If they, if they already have a that. solution yeah. that meets all the marks, then exactly. we're not going to invest time yep. in that. 
we'll focus on different things. Yep. That's yeah, very there's, cool. There's limitless yep. opportunity, even in Jeep alone, to make things that don't exist. So I don't see any reason right. to go into somebody else's product and, and compete with that. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that strategy's worked pretty well so far. That's so. really cool. This is this is something really unique. I really like this. Uh, my first experience with this was at Rogue Overland okay. uh, Expedition that we did uh, yeah. about a month ago. And I saw one of these on a couple of the vehicles out right. there. Uh, and then I believe you gave one of these away at that we event did. as well. Yep, we gave one. Um, and that, that was really cool. I, this, this is a really unique product. It's something oh, that I had not seen before. Yeah, and so, so the problem that we solved here, I was going on uh, a big like three or four day off-road event and we we're taking a Gazelle tent. Uh, and if you're familiar with Wranglers and Gazelle tents, it's like the tent was made to not, not to fit. fit in a Wrangler, like <laughs> yeah. in any situation doesn't whatsoever. Doesn't go this way, right. doesn't go this yep. way. And yeah. so I literally was walking around outside the vehicle and I set it on the tire and I'm like, man, if I could figure a way to do that, that'd be perfect. And mm -hmm. so it, the initial need was it was a tent support, like a tent mount. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, and it just so happened that needed to be flat. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it evolved from there. And this one also hasn't changed very much. We we feel like we come to the market with a pretty mature design at, at release. Nice, nice. So most of the time we don't have to do a lot of refinements to right, it. So right. already kind of flushed out all the, the yeah. shortcomings. And we, before we usually out. beat on them pretty hard before they come out. That, so. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the real world testing is is always going to win out that's right. above any kind of simulation. Yeah. So very cool. We started with storage for the Wranglers. That was a that was a pretty uh, easy place for us to go in and and, and carve out a niche. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we initially had everything made by a vendor. You know, obviously you don't buy machines okay. on day one. So. Right, that's fair, that's very fair. And so we were using a company in Louisiana mm -hmm. uh, and we were here in St. George at the time. So on that note real quick on the, being in Louisiana, is that, so that is a big focus for you guys, made in the U.S. Yeah, 100%. Bringing yeah. components, of, you know, your metals are coming yep. from U.S. Uh, production facilities, right. you know, things like that. Yeah, so. my stance on that is like, I, I understand we're in a global economy and I don't Absolutely. I don't mind competing on that stage. Mm -hmm. I want to do things better at a fair price. Like and, and better is where we try to position all of our products. Mm -hmm. Not, We are definitely price conscious, mm -hmm. uh, but we price based on what it costs us to make it, not what we think we can get for it. So it's, I, I'm pretty happy with our pricing structure now. And, and we actually did not have a price increase for COVID. Uh, we had to do a, one of the a, few companies. We did like a global increase, like right as COVID started, just by chance. Um, and then we, we really didn't raise prices anymore. Nice. So like you can go back and track our prices. And, and the reason that, that we were able to do that, like I was telling you earlier, at that point we were using a vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we would freight everything in and then you'd have like defects and you know by the time you right. whittled everything down the yep. products that were perfect you know you lost a big percentage of that not to mention all the money you spent on freight mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. else so, absolutely so we bought the laser and the brake about it's been about two years ago now okay and so obviously that was so this super that was, i imagine that was it that was like this is official. Like, there's no more. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like we are in it for good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're committed. You know, for yeah. a minimum seven to ten years, I guess yeah, at that point. Right. You right. know, but I mean, they are beautiful. I, I, we won't we won't jump over there just yeah, yet. Don't skip but ahead. Yeah, we're we're but, I'm um, excited to see those bad boys. But so what that allowed us to do is be like super efficient with production. Mm -hmm. uh, not hardly any waste. Uh, we saved all the money on freight. Yep. So instead of us having to raise our prices to meet COVID mm -hmm. demands and COVID markups everywhere we could stay consistent and we created that margin that we didn't have before nice, nice. so uh I, yeah it just worked out great timing wise uh, we also got pre-covid financing rates on everything oh, so that was man. really nice that, that deals deals yeah, deals exactly <laughs> so uh, but yeah a lot of it's been timing that's been great for us covid was good for demand yes you know absolutely. so we we like started we became that. super visible at, at SEMA in 2019. Mm -hmm. We had a few products that won some awards as as the new kid on the block. That was really cool. Nice. Uh, and so that sort of gave us a like a pre-COVID boost. Then mm -hmm. COVID obviously adds to demand. Absolutely. Uh, but killed our supply. So we tell everybody COVID was kind of a wash for us. It was enough good that it canceled out the bad. I feel like that's a, it seems like a good portion of the companies yeah. out there, like smaller, you know, companies all seem to be right in that same vein. It's like we, it became a wash, even though we saw a big increase in demand because of the, the jump toward going outdoors, experiencing nature for mm -hmm. a lot of the city folk and stuff like that. 
um, it was it was interesting to see. I thought there would be a lot more bump yeah. than there was. Well, I yeah. think that you know taking away the obvious negatives of COVID and right. the people that died and the unfortunate side of that, the the net gain uh, was probably a positive for our industry. I think. Yeah. You know, it sort of gave us a reset. You know, we got to spend time with our families and go out and do things that we were normally too busy to do. And right. like my kids are always in sports and mountain biking and everything else. And our weekends were always at a ball field or, you know, at a race or something like yeah. that. So yep. during COVID, we went out in the Jeeps every weekend. You know, oh, it was, yeah. that part was amazing for us. So, yeah. Kind of redirect that family time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. absolutely. And it gave us a chance to to take a, a smaller SUV out with mm -hmm. four people and a dog. And you know, I mean, so. and, and really put it to the test Absolutely, at that point. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's Matt, four people, dog, yeah. trying it's, to get all the gear, everything that you need yeah. in, a, in a small platform like this. Yeah, especially in the winter, you yeah. know, when everybody's got big jackets, sleeping bags and everything oh, yeah. else. So we're yeah. packing stuff into like every corner, <laughs> you know, to be transparent. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, we, we evolve our product line by putting it to the test and using it. So nice. you know, we'll be out, we'll be out in the tan Wrangler this weekend doing the same thing. So oh, awesome. Should be good. Awesome. Got some new, got some new, uh, things, uh, no, show not me really. Uh, not on that one. We do have some <laughs> new things coming out tomorrow, but, all right, all right. uh, they won't be on that Jeep, but, but yeah. And that's the thing about having the machines and the processes that we have, yep. you know, the product that we're launching tomorrow, uh, did not exist merely as an idea last week. Okay. So, you know, we can basically go from idea to iteration, to iteration to production, like super fast. Very you cool. know, before when we were using a vendor, you know, we would send off an iteration, come back, wait three weeks, wait three weeks, wait three weeks. Right, you know, right, and right. Now we wait three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. So, so really like, I mean, the, you know, the idea of uh, maybe down the road, like people coming in and needing like one-off scenarios or things like that. Like that, that could be something. Maybe so. You know, in, in yeah. the future. So the company, uh, the legal name of the company is American Adventure Labs with an S at the mm -hmm. end. And the concept there is we want to do that sort of boutique product development, idea development, uh, all across the country. Very you know, cool. but okay. to do that anywhere else we have to finish up the processes here right and right. and i think we're getting close we there's definitely some talks about some other nearby locations for like satellite locations okay. so it should be should be pretty cool very cool very cool but, yeah. well that's exciting man i'm uh, definitely looking forward to the future yeah. of that and uh i know as as a nomadic person that that uh, me and my partner are being on the road and stuff like that having facilities like this that would be open to those kind of boutique scenarios yeah is always exciting to hear because you know we run into just unique unique situations Absolutely. you know out yeah. there and, and it's not just the overland crowd right mm -hmm. it's the van life crowd Absolutely. the travel trailers you know there's a lot of things that we do in here that translate really well to other industries Absolutely. so yeah we're excited to build a to build a, a smaller version of what we have here mm -hmm. that's a little more packageable that can go into other locations very so, cool very cool yeah. that'll be exciting to see in the Absolutely. future Cool. Well, uh, yeah, if you'd like, I can kind of walk you around and show you some other parts of the yes. business and stuff like that. Yes. We'll start up front. All right. So the two tables here, these mm -hmm. are our incoming and outgoing areas. Okay. So we do a, right now, the only part of our process that we don't control uh, and is definitely going to be the death of me is powder coat, which <laughs> happens about a quarter of a mile from here. Gotcha. So we're, we're in this building because our powder coat vendor is that close. Gotcha. So we make four trips a day to powder oh, coat. Wow. Okay. Um, and, and they do a great job. Anybody that's got gotten powder coat from us knows what a quality product they turn out. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's not our timeline, you right. know, and right. like we've gone to so much trouble to control all of these processes mm -hmm. and we still end up waiting, you know, the For weakest that. link of that process yeah. is just working on somebody else's timeline. Yeah, so, that makes perfect so sense. So right now, uh, this is mostly outgoing. Okay. Uh, and then this will be our, our incoming. And here we, we kind of stage stuff when we unload it from the trucks. Gotcha. Uh, and then we do it from here. It'll generally go around to some area in here a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, for assembly and sort of staging of, of parts. Okay. Uh, not everything gets assembled, but like drawers and everything, we we assemble them before they leave. It's just better to ship them as one piece. Gotcha. So, but we do a lot of staging to go into shipping there. So, mm -hmm. uh, we foam pack most of the heavy things that want to poke through the box. 
Um, okay. That gets done here. Uh, we do wrap foam there. Okay. Rhonda's hiding. I don't so, know where she went. So a, a good amount of care goes into the packaging. Yeah, absolutely. Really, you know, make sure well, that this comes in as new as you sent it out. So I would like to say an equal amount of care goes into packaging as it does the other parts of the process. Awesome. Okay. Right. And that's, that makes sense. I yeah. feel like that is something that gets overlooked mm -hmm. in some some other places. I mean, we've definitely gotten massive boxes with a little piece in it and one piece of paper. <laughs> you know, like that that definitely right, happens. Right. But but the way I look at it, our whole company has busted its tail to get the product to that table. Yep. That table deserves as much attention as the rest of the process. So I like um, that thought process. We That's spend a bunch good. of money on, on packaging materials and double wall boxes and things like mm -hmm. that. But the last thing we want is somebody to have waited for a week or two on a product and to get there and be damaged. Yep. You know, so we, we try to avoid that when we can. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, this Super. is one of our assembly areas here. Okay. Uh, the stuff on the shelf, uh, the front row would be partially completed orders. Um, okay, got gotcha. you. Yeah, one right pretty much yep. 99% of those are waiting on one piece from powder, which is a story of my life. <laughs> um, That's, yeah, what, that, and I mean, that comes down to like the vertical integration it aspect. Does. You yeah. know, it's, it really does make it hard to, to be a, a truly successful company when you're constantly relying on other components yeah. that you have no control over. Yeah, and that's really the only one right now, and we're obviously in the works and bringing that in-house. Right. we got some pretty good movement on that. So. Nice, awesome, uh, awesome. I know I it's know not easy, so. It's not, and that's something <laughs> that I've tried to avoid. You know, powder coat is a, like our, our powder coat vendor is really, really good. Yeah. And there's a lot of care that goes into that. And for us to replicate that will be very expensive. It'll yeah. be a learning curve. We'll mm -hmm. damage some parts, mm -hmm. we'll make some mistakes. and. You know they they've been great. They're, you know the, I have no complaints with them, but um, we've we've eclipsed the volume that they can that keep they can. up with. So that totally makes but, sense, which is also good to hear. Yeah, I mean it's not, <laughs> you know it's a good problem, but still a problem. Yep. So, yep. Uh, we store some raw goods. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually only things that make sense to be built in a batch. Uh, a lot of things it doesn't make sense to batch build. Um, probably. Probably 40% of our product line is built to order okay. uh, using round numbers. So, but the things that aren't are on the shelf, gotcha. like like inner fenders. We yeah, we sell a bunch sense. of those. We batch build those like yep. crazy. Yep. So, that's Very that's cool. actually pretty low stock for us right now. So well, we usually there's batch 100 soon. sets or so on the shelf. So. Gotcha. But, New these, a new batch coming soon. <laughs> absolutely. And so these are all the fasteners that we use oh, for wow. the whole entire company. So I feel like we do a pretty good job of designing with existing hardware. Mm -hmm. Which and is so, always nice. Yeah, that gives us great, great opportunity to buy at a very large volume. Yep. Uh, so we get the piece count down pretty low. Mm -hmm. And we get to use like really high quality stuff. So like if you go to Fastenal and buy that bolt, it's like a dollar and nine cents. You gotcha. know, like, yeah, we don't. We use good stuff, but, and we get to do that because we buy it at such it's volume, just, mm -hmm. we can include it at a, at a good price. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, nice. Things, you, things that I've learned along the way. I, I love that this is a focus because this is the most important, one of the most important parts, you it know, is. this, Absolutely. you know, if, if, it, if it's not a good quality, you know, six months down the road of exposure and all yep. of a sudden you have little rings of rust and yep. things like that. So this is good to see. Yep. A few more stored goods there, not not a lot. We do our VersaTable. So we do a VersaTable, which is our, our basically our version of a tailgate table. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, for the Wrangler and for, uh, well, just Wrangler right now. We'll have a Bronco out very soon. Gotcha. Uh, JK and JL for now. So that's the bamboo version. Uh, okay, uh, nice. We cut those outside in a CNC router. Nice, okay. This is the Poplar version. Mm -hmm. uh, so those get sealed with like a, like a butcher block type material, uh, okay, gotcha. and then these get uh, stained and uh, polyurethane coated. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so it'd be like a varnish or oh, yeah, it it's like a, an oil I forget or? what it's called, but yeah. Oh, that's it's probably the oil. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, so, yeah, okay, yeah, yep. yep. That's like cooking oil kind of so, food grade stuff. Yep, right? absolutely. Yep. yep, that makes much sense. So this area back here used to be where we assembled all of our Highline lights. Uh -huh. uh, which is what's the, the little light that's on the front of the fender flare on the JL. Hmm. Uh, okay. Now we're actually sending those to Dio Dynamics and they're making them in-house. Oh, nice. So we're still having a fully U.S. made light 
uh, but at a standard that would be impossible for us to do. That's exciting. You know, those guys do amazing work. They've been with us from like, I, I literally sent them the CAD from the original light. And I said, these are our constraints. We can do whatever we want inside of this container. Yep. And we started over from scratch. Uh, it's a printed circuit board, really nice LEDs. Oh, wow. um, everything's UV coded. So it's it's going to last a long time. Three year warranty on them. So, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's really, really nice. exciting. And I guess that's when, uh, you know, you realize the limitations of the idea of vertical integration and realize yeah. that there are certain components yep. that partnerships are definitely needed. Yeah. And so where we were at on that, so that, that light uh, I invented, I created, we had the first one. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, three or four people have straight up copied it, but I felt ownership over that product. Yep. And I knew that the light that we were sending out was the best light we could make, but it wasn't the best light that was possible. Absolutely. So to get the best light possible, we had to lose some margin, we had to lose some control, mm -hmm. um, but the end product was worth it in this nice. case. So that's it exciting. turned out really good. Awesome, so, awesome, that's super cool. So do, now this is gonna get repurposed to uh, well, something in the future? on the other or? side of the shelf it will. Over here, we still do some welding. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't necessarily weld to create products, we weld to fuse products. So okay. we do a, like create a- Create one piece unit. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yep. yep. We do really, really tight tolerances between our parts, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't use a lot of filler. Uh, we don't generally don't do any MIG welding. Everything is TIG welded. And uh, yeah, so really clean, low dust. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to keep the environment pretty clean in here nice. for that. So, who's, who's the fancy TIG welder? Uh, it's either <laughs> me or Mikhail's doing most of it. Lately. Oh, very nice, very nice. So, what one day I say it all the time. One day I'm gonna learn. <laughs> oh, it's great. TIG's the best way. Yeah, uh, my friend don't would, catch yourself on fire though. That that's way. yeah. That's what my <laughs> friend was like. It's uh, you're in control of all of it. Absolutely. So it's up to yep. you to mess it up. Yep. So that's it. We miss my favorite machine in the shop. So. That's a, uh, this is basically to tap holes. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think it's on, yeah. yeah. So I know this may seem trivial to some people, but uh, a hole that's properly tapped and straight is everything when you're assembling like that. So this guy, you can set him to that, automatic. That, yep. You can put your thread size, your pitch, uh, and your speed in and speed out. Oh, wow. And it'll do it all for you. That and it'll push is cool. itself out and everything, so, yeah. I thought if we're going to tap that many holes, we want to make sure they're correct. And this, yep, that this makes is our sense. guy. So that's got to be the worst when one hole doesn't quite line up. Yeah, with well, especially hole. once you've shipped it to you know Antarctica, oh. which we've done. Okay. Yeah, we Fair. had some stuff go to Antarctica that wasn't right, so that was a bummer. Oof. All right, Again, so here's the here's the obvious uh, gorilla in the room. <laughs> uh, so this is a six kilowatt fiber laser from Mitsubishi. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, this was their best and brightest at the time, and I, I believe still is. We've had it about two years. So we do a bed exchange, mm -hmm. so we can load material onto here. Uh, okay, uh, Which see. means when we swap the beds, the one that just cut comes out. So mm -hmm. that gives us time to denest everything and, gotcha. and reload a sheet. And most of the time, by the time that one's cutting, we can swap it over. Gotcha. So. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, we cut mostly in five by 10 sheets. Uh, in mm -hmm. aluminum and steel. And we, most of our stuff is pretty thin. Uh, our designs are built in a way to leverage the thinner thinner material for weight savings and mm -hmm. cost savings and stuff like that, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, usually this guy's guy is running, but we're we're actually changing out the floor. Yeah, I was just gonna mezzanine. ask. It looks like we got some uh, some construction going on. Yeah, well, that's it. We're the maintenance there. We're improving. Nice, I like it. So. Very, very cool. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is this is the monitor. So the, the machine creates all the data. Okay. Uh, it sends all the cut data back to the mothership at Mitsubishi. Yep. Uh, and then we pull it back down and display it up here and so tell us our uh, cut time percentage and power percentage. And, and it's and like a like full that, so. like a uh, CAD style uh, yeah, line may, drawing may kind of scenario. Or... We'll see what. Yeah, that's it. Minus the Netflix. <laughs> oh, ads. very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I got you. Yeah, and so this is available anywhere online. So a lot of times we'll. Check it from home or whatever. If we've got big jobs running, gotcha. make sure everything's yep. going. Make right. sure everything's running right. Nothing's dropped off. Yep. Uh, yep. yep. That makes sense. So and we cut mostly. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say th th this is the giant laser. Yep. That's it. That is massive. It does a good job. We cut mostly on what's called shop air. Uh, okay. So traditionally, you would cut our materials on a blend of nitrogen and or oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, what we found during our testing of all the manufacturers that made lasers 
our best cuts that we were getting on were primarily eighth inch aluminum. The mm -hmm. best cuts that we could get came off of high pressure shop air. Oh. So this is a system I come to call Liberty Systems. Mm -hmm. uh, these are what's called stage tanks. Uh, this is a normal screw compressor. Okay. So it pumps up to about 127 PSI. Gotcha. Uh, it fills the bottom tank. Then the compressor in the middle is called a booster compressor. It pulls from the bottom tank and pumps up to 430 PSI for the top tank. Ah, so we actually okay. cut at 430 pounds, which is substantially so more than if you were cutting with nitrogen. Okay. You just wouldn't want to blow that much nitrogen yeah. out of the nozzle. Yeah. It'd be crazy expensive. Uh, so that extra high pressure lets us make a really fine line mm -hmm. in the material and blow it out really fast. So we don't get a bunch of slag on okay, the bottom so side. So you're keeping that pace nice. Yeah, and exactly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so you're, you're basically blowing all the material out as fast as possible. That's really cool. A step up compression yeah. compressor yep. system. And, and we make our own nitrogen. So on the other side, we have a nitrogen generator. Uh, so we purge the head with nitrogen. Okay. And, uh, okay. and that's all, all in-house. So. Very cool. We do occasionally cut on nitrogen and occasionally on oxygen mm -hmm. uh, for different materials, but uh, we just use bottles for those. But gotcha. Ninety nine percent of our stuff cuts off of the shop air system. So. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, I'm this assuming is the these chiller. Are... Yeah, that's the compressor we're talking about earlier. Yeah. That's the chiller. So you think of that as just a giant radiator. Okay. Uh, that's cooling the head. Gotcha. Um, that makes sense. That over there is our dust collector. So it's basically a dust collector like you'd have with any CNC machine. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it keeps a pretty good pressure suck inside the machine yep. and uh, HEPA filters on top keeps the keeps the shop clean and everything. Very nice. So very cool. Uh, and then we get to another cool machine. So this is the, the obviously the press brick. Mm -hmm. um, 10 foot 132 ton, which is a, a really weird metric number that <laughs> they want to be 132 for some reason. But. <laughs> uh, oh, that's another point that I should probably mention. Like we're metric inside the shop. Like yeah. everything in here yep. is metric. Every vehicle that we support. Uh, well, now we're doing some LJ stuff, so maybe that's <laughs> that. Mostly every vehicle we support is metric. You're gonna be um, forced to use a little standard. Uh, on man, I had to go to the hardware to store and buy a, a standard bolt the other day. There's not a standard bolt yeah. in this entire oh, wow. shop. Yeah. So awesome. I guess we learned that lesson, but. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, so, it, the me I mean, as we all know, the metric's the way to go. Well, it's so much Precision, easier. Precision, the, yeah. the rounded numbers, it just, it just yeah. makes it way more sense. Well, I, I wasn't necessarily a metric guy mm -hmm. before the business, but we made the commitment, you know, we're going to support metric vehicles. Yeah. We need to think in metric numbers inside the shop. Yeah. And um, yeah, when somebody new comes in, it's always a little different. Right, Tanner? Yeah. Learning the metric, <laughs> Learning you, the metric. using metric system throughout the day is there's just a conversion that you got to run in your head for a while once you get used to it. It's yeah, the, yeah, it's just the same as yep. anything else, yep. right? So. Right, right. Very cool. So the system that you see on top, I was gonna say, called, well, yeah, this is yeah, we can go uh, very uh, like Father uh, Tanner for a second. You get that off, okay? So the system that we have here, so this is a projector. Okay. Uh, yep, so I it's projecting it. onto just a normal head mm -hmm. on the press brake. And this is just the ram. So this whole piece moves down. But what this gives us is the ability to set up oh, tooling wow, touch for the too. job. That's cool. uh, and we can, uh, we can go through here and, and see all the different steps and the bend. We can move it. Uh, we can zoom in if I do it right. Uh, oh, wow. If you want to see Very some detail cool. and stuff. Yep. Um, and so the reason we do this was was twofold. Uh, the main reason, which is always the funniest, is because it looks really cool. Um, so we, we yeah. try to... I mean, I think it looks very, very cool. <laughs> we, honestly, we try to set the shop up, keep it super clean mm -hmm. so that we can market the shop. Yeah, right. So we're, we're building high end products. We want people to know they're being made with high end machines, mm -hmm. high end processes, things like that. Right. And this was a way that we could really show off like our focus on precision and process and repeatability and things like that. Absolutely. So, uh, the other thing that that we do um, is it helps us like if we go. So this shows you how the part goes into the machine. Ah, so okay. as you run through and go from step to step. You can actually see, if it was zoomed out a little bit, you would see the part rotating. That's so as an operator, you know all you exactly have to do is do what it says on the screen and mm -hmm. it shows you how to go. So Perfect. Uh, that helps with the repeatability, making sure everybody's comfortable with the machine and Absolutely. it's been great. So it also takes out some of the need for an expert operator. 
right? Because right, right. you and me and all the guys we have in the shop are generally younger. Mm -hmm. We're used to video screens. We're not yep. used to press breaks. No, you know, not like at this all. is right. This, this is, was a this is daunting thing for me. Yep. The first parts I ever bent were on this machine. Oh wow! Right, okay. and so like learning that process and having all the information that that us as you know the younger generation of people mm -hmm. is used to is super helpful. Yeah, so, yeah. And I imagine all. All this is done in uh, proprietary CAD like software. Yeah, it's and it's, it's, it's and all it feeds part everything of their deal. through there. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's very all Mitsubishi cool. software. It's called Diamond Bin. Diamond Bin. So very cool. So this is sort of our production setup computer. Mm -hmm. This is where we do most of the scheduling, uh, okay. some of the nesting, uh, and then we push that out to the servers up in the top, uh, and then we all the machines are connected over the network, uh, and we feed off of the the one server that's up there. Perfect. So. Perfect. That way, all all data is streamlined, That's and right. everyone's getting yep. the, the yeah, end we, result. Yeah, we don't we don't do paper here. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, we'll print out. Like if you notice the orders that were up there that were partial, mm -hmm. those have an order sheet on them, and that's just so we can walk by and see it. So that gotcha. sheet is printed. Yep. That's about the only thing we print in the whole shop. So we're doing a, a new ERP implementation now, which will be our MRP, ERP, CRM. Um, yep. everything it's the whole the whole shooting match but and once we do that we'll be even even less paper nice, uh, nice. And a lot, yeah because I know a lot, a lot of, of um, there's a new there's a new system basically being launched across the board a couple other companies are going yep. through the whole thing right now too yeah we we were on NetSuite for a couple of years and basically I paid that massive bill for two years and we never could get it launched and at some point, I said, well, we just got to pull a plug on it and move to something else. So, yep. so we're in a product called Odoo now, and it's been amazing. Nice. I love it. Now it's, nice. it's a learning experience, and it's a lot of work, but yep. it's going to be worth it. Awesome. The efficiencies, they always, they, it always gets better. At, yep. you know, Absolutely. The setup time sometimes is a little bit of a pain, but once it's set up, yeah. it Gar makes Garbage in, garbage easier. out. So. Exactly, exactly. So this is my desk. Uh, I don't have an office. I live in the middle like everybody else does. I like being a part of the team, uh, you know. Perfect. I design stuff here, cut it there, bend it there, install it here, you know. So we, mm -hmm. don't, we don't have these big walls in between all of our processes okay. that a lot of companies do. And as we grow, that's gonna be harder and harder to maintain. Mm -hmm. uh, but the intent is that we don't create walls in between right. the departments. Everyone's communicating, that's everyone's right. yep. together. Yep. So all, yep. all three of the designers sit right here. So anybody that has a question, you just bend over and ask the question and they keep on going. Yeah. So that's worked out really so, well. So on that note, I, the, 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 you have the three designers here. Mm -hmm. what, what does the team look like as a whole here? Like how many people, like different yep. different yep. areas we, of the company? We have 13 total. Um, we generally have three to four guys in production at all times. Mm -hmm. And the, the cool thing about how we work, almost everybody, especially everybody like this end of the building can do every job. Nice. And, that, and that includes a lot of design. And we don't expect everybody to know CAD, but it is nice if you can open up a SOLIDWORKS model and understand how something lays out right, or right. you know, make sure the parts bent the right direction and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I feel like we do a pretty good job of cross training and, and growing that knowledge through other roles inside the company. So very cool, very yeah. cool. That's pretty much the 360 tour. There's not much exciting stuff outside. We have the Toter home. So we've, we did a new event vehicle this year. So we've got a 75 foot semi and trailer that we take uh, to the events with moderate success. I had a little bit of a trailer issue coming home from Daytona, but oh, no. uh, it's nice to be able to take stuff and it stays clean. Yeah. We got all of our displays, we got our product, mm -hmm. that stuff. And, uh, yep. and we have the CNC router outside, which is just a router. Yep. Everyone loves a good router. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for showing really? us the uh, facility. It's really exciting to see the uh, the dedication and the, I guess, attention to detail that you put into your products. Cool. Well, I appreciate and, uh, that. And it's really cool to see. Cool. Awesome. Well, I yeah. appreciate you guys coming out and taking the tour. So yeah. if you guys want to know more about us, find us at American Adventure Lab on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And TikTok and Twitter and all the other all good the fun. Things. So awesome, yeah. awesome. Make sure you check them out and uh, support uh, local made uh, products here in the US.